Welcome back everybody and for all of those that are new to the channel welcome and thank you for checking it out. Today we're going to be having a little bit different of a video as we're going to be going to look at things that you can do to really add on to the immersion level of, that the game possesses. Before we get started though don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button as we continue to aim for that 5,000 subscriber goal and it would really help me out with the YouTube algorithm and I know we can hit it quickly if just a fraction of the 86% of viewers that aren't subscribed hit that button and for all of those that have thank you very much it means a lot to me remember to stay tuned through the end of the video to see how to get into our current and future giveaways though throughout the development of star citizen a key factor of the game and the pu has been immersion this has been stressed many times by chris roberts and also by sig stating that the goal is to take it to the edge of realism and then dial it back to fun and as you play Star Citizen, you can definitely feel the work that they are putting into reaching this goal. With everything from the inventory system, the law enforcement and prison system, as well as the intricate medical gameplay, you feel the level of immersion they're striving for and working hard to create. The game itself is entirely playable on mouse and keyboard, as well as on a game controller. But this is really one area in which you can add on to the immersion of the verse and really create another experience. And that's actually in the peripherals that you use to play and interact with the game itself. We're going to be taking a look at some of the different peripherals you can use in the moderate price range that will be available to most gamers out there. I'll make sure that I put links in the description for each of these as well as if you decide to get one of these options. Use the affiliate link in the description and I would greatly appreciate it. The first item that we're going to look at that will allow you for a more immersive feel in the interaction with your ship. It's actually going to be Game Glass, and this isn't actually a peripheral itself, but a software that can be used on a tablet you already own. Game Glass operates through what they call shards. They have shards that work with a large variety of games, including Elite Dangerous, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and especially Star Citizen. The PC software and tablet app are free, and for the basic functions within Star Citizen, the initial pilot shard is free as well but you can actually buy additional shards focused on the activities you play the most or sign up with a subscription and you're going to have access to all of them at no additional charge. What the shards do is give you a layout on your tablet that allows you to control different functions within your ship or the game itself through touch control. With most standard functions available, it's like having a ship control panel right in front of you as if you're in the cockpit. Other panels outside the pilot base panel include vehicles, EVA, mining, combat, avionics, and even social emotes. Shards can cost between $2.99 and $6.99 each, or you can get that subscription for as low as $34.46 per year, and monthly plans are available. Keep in mind, it does require a separate tablet or phone to be used, and the applications are available on the Apple Store and Android Store, and I'll put a link in the description below for their website. The next peripheral that I'm going to take a look at, and we'll look at it, actually several of these, and that's going to be the flight control system, otherwise known as a HOTUS. A HOTUS stands for Hand on Throttle and Stick. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a throttle and it's a stick. The first one that we're going to look at, though, is the X-52 made by Logitech. It's an excellent entry-level option as far as price and ease of learning, it's a stick that offers a right control stick and a left throttle. It is a little older design from Logitech, and you will find it's actually sold under the Logitech name as well as Cytec. These are basically the same sticks though, and I've heard the Cytec branded ones can tend to be a little bit more finicky and have quality issues, but I haven't seen it personally myself. The X-52 is the HOTUS I started with and was very easy to pick up. It operates through a single USB port from the throttle, and the flight stick actually connects to the throttle via serial cable. This is a non-ambidextrous controller though, so keep that in mind if you're a lefty and you prefer the stick on the left. The X-52 actually offers 105 programmable buttons and switches as well as a backlit LCD MFD screen that will show you basic function, but nothing really pertaining to the game. The controller itself does have multiple modes that it can have programmed and the software is easy to control and user friendly. The controller itself is a pivoting throttle with tension control and offers plentiful buttons and switches to be able to map most every ship control and function at your fingertips. It also has convenient rotary dials that are great for use with the mining laser. The grip on the flight stick is also adjustable for grip size as well. 
Typically, this is going to sell for about 145 US dollars new and used. You can find it for as low as $105 on Amazon at the time of this video. Again, it's great entry level control system that is easy to operate and the layout is very intuitive. And it has a cool flap over the missile firing button that really makes you feel like you're about to let loose and cause some real damage. One thing to remember is programming the keybinds is simplified as Star Citizen has a pre configured profile in the keybinds under the advanced controls for the X52 stick. The X52 is a great stepping stone also to the next HOTUS that we're going to talk about, which is the Logitech X56 Rhino. A bit more advanced than the X52, with a more realistic feel, the Rhino offers over 189 programmable buttons, has programmable RGB, split throttle for more control options, and it includes also tension on both throttles. It's packed with additional springs to customize the flight stick feel to your liking. The X56 also has more control options than you know what to do with and has built-in dials right on the throttle base that are excellent for the mining laser and able to dial in extremely precise adjustments, making breaking rocks that much easier. The throttle base also has multiple three-way switches, making things like the lights, landing gear, and coupled mode right there at your fingertips and easy to activate. This hose really builds on the feel that you are piloting a ship. Starting price on Amazon is $249 US for new. And for someone that wants an even better feel than the X52, you can't go wrong with this one. I used it for quite a long time myself, but be aware, just like with the X52, it is not ambidextrous. And also, just to let you know, most desk mounts are compatible with both Logitech systems. Moving on to the next item, we're going to be discussing head tracking and eye tracking. Now, most of you are probably familiar with Track IR, and it's a very capable and reliable system to use for head tracking in games. So it does require additional camera and of course that strange antler looking thing attached to the side of your headset. Well, there's a better option that really minimizes all that, including allowing head tracking without having to mount something on the side of your head. And that's going to be the Toby 5 eye tracker. This thing is absolutely amazing and I'll admit I love it to death. What this consists of is only one piece of equipment, which is small and easy to install. It connects via USB cable and has a USB extension cable inside the box for those that need a little longer connection to their PC. The eye tracker attaches to the mount magnetically, and then the mount actually attaches to the bottom of your monitor that you're going to play the game on. And that's it. No weird antlers to put on your headset or extra camera on top of your monitor. Simple and easy. Once it's mounted, all you have to do is install the software and calibrate it, which is even simpler. Open up the software, select which monitor it is you have it attached to if you have a multi-monitor system, and then line up the lines on the screen with the two indents that are on top of the tracker, and then look at seven points on the screen and it's calibrated, ready to go. Star Citizen also is already set up for use with this in their FOIP and VoIP settings menu, and all you have to do is tell it that you have a Toby. Inside this menu, you'll find small adjustments for sensitivity, though mine seem to be perfectly fine right out of the box at its default. Within Star Citizen, you can also set what kind of scenarios it will be active or deactivated for, such as ADS or aim down sights, your FPS missions, Moby Glass, or just general interaction. As you go through each of these, it will activate and deactivate as you enter the modes, and then we'll come back on once you exit out. What this little bar does though is amazing. It allows you to have your character's head do whatever you're actually doing. If you wanna to see to the left, all you have to do is turn your head as you naturally would, and your character follows with little to no lag. Look up, look down, look right. It does it no matter what, and it's really easy to use. It'll even adjust as you lean forward or back and even side to side. It really adds to that immersion immensely. I typically leave mine off on stream or while I'm recording just so I don't make anybody seasick. But in my regular playing times, I always have this thing on. It's also compatible with many Windows functions and applications and does turn off and on as needed as it sees you sit down or get up. The iTracker 5 by Toby is generally $229 US dollars on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description below. 
And this will bring us right back to another HOTUS system. And the third one that I'm going to talk about is the Thrustmaster T16000 series. I'm mostly going to discuss their base HOTUS system, but one thing that Thrustmaster really has in his corner is variety. They offer setups that consist not only of the standard HOTUS, but also a racing version with wheel and pedals, flight pack, which includes the HOTUS with the pedals, Space Sim Duo, which is a dual stick setup, as well as just the pedals on their own. If we look at the HOTUS setup though, it's actually a very basic design. The flight stick has six buttons on its base, as well as a slider on the back that you can use for your mining laser. And then it has a single action trigger with a multi-directional hat on top, surrounded by three additional buttons that you can map for whatever you need. I really feel it's a little more limited in the number of buttons and switches in comparison to either of the Logitechs. And this throttle is actually a slider linear throttle, meaning that it's going straight forward and straight back instead of pivoting on a point. The throttle itself actually has numerous buttons and hats available on it as well too, more so than what the flight stick has. It has a set of paddles on the backside you can program for many different things, multiple four-way hats as well as buttons, and does offer the largest variety of mappings on the throttle itself versus the stick. One thing though that the T16000 does have over all other ones I'm going to talk about is that it's truly ambidextrous. Inside the box, you get everything you need to be able to switch it over to a left-handed stick, if that's what you prefer. The overall feel of the Thrustmaster is definitely different from the X52 or the X56 that have a more realistic feel versus a very plasticky kind of toy-like feel to it. And with the loss of a number of buttons on the controller, it means that you're going to be going back to the keyboard more often than you would with the others. But the availability of a variety of configuration definitely earns it a place on the list today. My biggest recommendation though, if you go with the T16000, a better option may be to do so with the Space Sim dual stick, as that really, in my opinion, offers a more immersive feel and a higher level of control for your ship as you're flying around. The T16000 HOTA system is available on Amazon starting around $160 US dollars. And to go with the Space Sim Dual, you're going to be looking at a price increase up to $197 US dollars. These sticks, as well as all the others, are designed to sit on top of a desk, though especially with these ones because of their lightweight compared to the Logitech's, I really recommend getting a desk mount system that would hold it in place as these tend to definitely shift around, especially if you're in a high-stress dogfighting or PvP kind of situation. A good mount that is compatible with all of these ones I've talked about so far is the J-Pine desk mounts that are available on Amazon for about 60 US dollars each. And these will work with the T16000 as well as the Logitech systems utilizing the correct bracket that comes in the box. So this is going to bring us to audio. And what's immersion without sound? To be honest, I'm not a real audiophile nut, but I know what I like when I'm hearing it coming through my headset. One of the headsets I love and I religiously use myself is the Razer Nari Ultimate. This is actually a wireless headset designed by Razer that offers a ton of features. It has wireless 7.1 surround sound. It also has a retractable mic that slides right back into the headset and out of the way. It's got Razer's HyperSense and THX spatial audio. And it also has haptic feedback. And yes, haptic feedback is in vibrations on the side of your head. And believe it or not, it actually can increase the immersion of the game. The Razer HyperSense is the key to the haptic feedback as it converts the sound into dynamic touch sensory feedback that flows left to right and is adjustable in intensity depending on where the sound is coming from in game. Completely compatible with the Razer Synapse system, the RGB is programmable and the haptic feedback has an adjustment for intensity so that you can really set it to your comfort level. What you'll get in the box is going to be obviously the headset, a USB dongle, as well as a USB A to C cable, so that in times of low battery, you can plug it into your PC and use it as a wired system. Battery life, though, is usually not a problem as it's got an 8-hour battery life, and I've done my 12 and 24-hour streams with these things, and it definitely lasts that 8 hours, at which point I usually go to my backup Barracuda by Razer until those charge back up as my PC is a little further away than what the uh, cable will reach. The Razer Nari Ultimates also have extreme comfort. With deep cushioned ear cups, these things stay on my head for eight hours. I take them off and it feels like I wasn't wearing them at all. 
It's got crystal clear sound and the Synapse also offers an equalizer to adjust to your liking for your preferred audio. It also has an additional bass boost through using the Razer Synapse software. Direct from Razer, these are going to be around $199 US dollars, but you can actually get it for a much better deal. Refurbished, you can actually get them on Amazon for as low as $89. Brand new on Amazon, they're going to run $189, but I've seen these things at Best Buy for as much as $159 US dollars new. I definitely recommend these to anyone that is looking for an immersive sound experience in-game from a headset. And this is really going to bring us to the final peripheral that I wholeheartedly recommend, and I have it myself, is the VKB Dual Stick HOSA system. Now we did discuss the T16000 Dual Stick system that they have, but this blows those out of the water. Slightly different than a HOTUS, a HOSIS is hand on stick and stick. This means you don't have a sliding or pivoting throttle handle, but another flight stick for control. And as far as performance for your money, you cannot go wrong with the VKB. Specifically the Gladiator NXT. The NXT is actually sold as a single stick and base, but offers a left and a right hand option. So when you pair one of each of these together, you have a dual stick system. Personally, I found that the controlling game is on another level with this system. It feels as if I'm in more control of the ship itself. VKB Gladiators come in two options, and that's going to be the standard as well as the premium. I would absolutely say it is worth the extra 30 US dollars per stick to go with the premiums though, as it does increase the number of interactions on each stick. With an additional rapid fire trigger, an additional four way stick at each thumb, an additional eight way analog stick, programmable RGB LED as well. The extra controls are well worth the upcharge, and all VKBs come with an additional tools and springs to maintain your sticks as well as an extra set of screws. You can also find that they now offer the availability of an omnidirectional throttle for any of you that really want that push throttle action that you get with a HOTUS. The shipping on these did cost a little bit more as they come from overseas but arrived in about 8 to 10 days. They do require assembly of the stick into the base but this is very easy and there are video links on the website for a very detailed step by step process if you're a little uneasy about it. The versatility of these sticks actually continues to grow as VKB now offers a range of side extension modules built to attach directly to the base. These range from an avionics panel, a throttle quadrant, and side extension modules. Now all of these modules can be used as standalone devices but really shine when they're attached to a gladiator stick. I actually use one of each module and the throttle quadrant makes mining super easy and precise as you control the laser with the lever. A set of sticks and bases will cost 300 US dollars, not including the shipping. And if you decide to go with an attachment, they range from 70 US dollars to 99 US dollars. VKB even offers a rudder pedal separate that is compatible with all of their systems for 215 US dollars. And that will give you the true cockpit feel. These have become very popular to the extent that CIG has also built a control profile into the advanced controls of your HOTUS keybinds within the game. With my VKBs, I did opt to get the stronghold mounts that VKB offers as they're custom built for these sticks and they are absolute tanks. These things actually have a wider clamping area onto the desk and they are solid as steel. As I stated, immersion is one of the key elements that CIG has worked hard to maintain within the verse. I personally think they have done an amazing job and these peripherals I went over expand on that immensely. I hope that this video on how you can enhance your experience has been helpful and please feel free to leave a comment as to what your favorite peripheral is to use while playing the game. Don't forget to get your entries for February's giveaway which is a Avenger Titan starter pack with Squadron 42. Just subscribe and comment on any video here and you'll automatically be entered. Or you can follow on Twitch which will also provide an additional entry. And that's where you can catch the stream every Wednesday and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time or even our podcast every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, State of the Verse, where we cover the week's latest news from CIG and Star Citizen Universe. Also, when you follow on Twitch, you'll automatically be entered in for the Twitch giveaway of a Gigabyte OC Vision RTX 3070 graphics card. Winner will be drawn on March 1st. This is my personal card as I've upgraded to a 3090 and will be awarding it to one of our viewers over on Twitch. I'll also be giving away starting March 1st an exclusive for YouTube 
the toby eye tracker 5 as of march 1st all you gotta do is be subscribed comment on any video to get an entry and the winner will be drawn on april 1st i want to say thank you to everyone for checking out the video and if you'd like to support the channel check out the patreon or the merch store or hit the join button above and get a membership for as low as 99 cents but thanks again and everybody be safe out there and we'll catch you next time